Hi yogis and yoginis, welcome back to The Traveling Yogini. Today we're going to be working on our third eye chakra and using poses that will stimulate the chakra. We're gonna do um, some of our breathing work that will also help stimulate that area and also a little bit of chanting to sing to that chakra. Now the third eye is located just above the space between the eyebrows. So right there, kind of at the center of the forehead, just a little bit lower than that. Um, the color that's represented for this uh, third eye chakra is either indigo, which is a little bit of a darker blue, um, or a white color. The element for the chakra is light, and the little seed mantra that we're going to chant later on to sing to it is sham, S-H-A-M. And this area, the third eye, it includes the eyes, the head, the nervous system, and the lower parts of the brain. So when we are stimulating that third eye or brow chakra, also called Ajna chakra in Sanskrit, we are benefiting all of those different areas. So when you have a good balanced sixth chakra, we are able to concentrate, focus, and we trust our intuition regularly. So able to focus regularly, able to concentrate without feeling scattered, pretty much on a regular basis. Now, if we have an underactive sixth chakra, one that's in need of stimulation, it might look a little bit like this. We might have poor vision, poor memory, poor dream recall and imagination. We might also have a difficulty visualizing, a difficulty seeing into the future, denial and insensitivity. So we're going to try to stimulate this area so that we can get to some good balance there. And Michelle Fondin from the, Ch the Chopra Center says that this is a spiritual chakra, which means beyond wisdom. And Ajna leads us to an inner knowledge that will guide us if we let it. So another great way to stimulate the third eye is to practice meditation. And I know today our video is mostly a physical practice, but if you can find time for, medica for meditation, that would be helpful as well. We are gonna use a guided meditation during Shavasana today. So let's go ahead and get ready to get started here. We always wanna start with two feet flat on the ground. And I always like to start my practice by unwinding through the shoulders. If it's at the end of a long day, unwinding here might be a way for us to undo any forward rounding of the shoulders that tends to happen maybe when we're in our workplace. If it's the beginning of the day when you're practicing with me, then it's just a nice way to open up after having been asleep all night. So let's roll those shoulders back and down one more time and bring those shoulders down away from the ears. And let's turn the palms of our hands to face forward, standing tall in Tadasana pose. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. And bringing our focus to the sound of our healthy breathing. And when we focus on the sound of that breath, we're able to block out any other distractions and bring ourselves right here to this present moment, right here, right now. We feel each foot firmly connected to the ground beneath us. We're rising up to our own tallest height. And we might check in with ourselves, checking in to see how are we feeling in the third eye today? Are we feeling like we have good focus and concentration? Or are we feeling a little scattered? Regardless of what we're observing, 
Let's observe without judgment and just bring our thoughts to the present so that we can find good balance there if we need it. And if we're already feeling balanced, we'll keep that good balanced uh, feeling going throughout the day. And as we hear the sound of our healthy breath, we're reminded to breathe throughout each pose, especially if a pose is challenging for us. Let's keep breathing rather than holding our breath. And let's make a promise to ourselves to listen to the body at all times, easing up whenever needed, and giving ourselves a challenge whenever wanted. And throughout the practice today, we might repeat the, this affirmation to ourselves. I am wise, intuitive, and able to listen to my inner guidance. I am wise, intuitive, and able to listen to my inner guidance. Let's take a few more cleansing and centering breaths here. And when we're ready, let's slowly open our eyes. All right, let's start with two feet, hips distance apart at the top of our mats. We'll start with our right foot, stepping back for warrior one, using our flowing warriors to warm the body today. Let's inhale both arms overhead, gently straightening the front leg. And on the exhale, come back to a good bend in that front knee. Bringing our focus to the sound of that healthy breath, allowing any stray thoughts to fade away. Remember, if we're using our overhead arms and our, our shoulders are feeling fatigued or we're just guarding the arms or shoulders, you could certainly just flow here without using the arm movements. And likewise, if the legs are feeling fatigued and you just want to do the arm portion, you're welcome to do so. Everything in our practice here is meant to give us the practice that we need. So I'm going to give lots of options. You use them as you like to create the practice that suits you best. One more deep breath here. All right, when you're ready, let's take that back foot stepping back into warrior two. So now it's like we're standing on a balance beam here. Looking out over that front middle finger, let's continue to flow the pose. Another way that you can try to stimulate that third eye chakra is to wear those colors, the element colors, excuse me, the color of the chakra, and wear it with purpose. So if I pull out an indigo colored sweater and I put it on with the intention of thinking about the third eye and trying to stimulate that area, then that's wearing that garment with purpose. Now come on back to warrior two. Let's step all the way up to the top of the mat, inhaling arms overhead, little bend in the knees as we swan dive to a forward fold. On the inhale, let's lift to monkey with a flat back. And on the exhale, down to forward fold. Let's rise up as we inhale, palms touching, and exhale, resting the blades of the thumbs gently at the third eye. Let's inhale those arms back overhead. 
Swan diving down. Inhaling up to monkey. Exhaling, forward fold. Rising as we inhale, palms touching. Exhale the thumbs to the third eye. Inhale and rise. Exhaling as we swan dive. One more time through. Now inhale those arms up and let's bring the arms all the way back down. Let's try those warriors again, this time stepping our other foot back. So we take our left foot back, squaring the hips to face forward for warrior one. Inhaling both arms overhead, and on the exhale, come back to the bend in the knee. So as I mentioned earlier, we can wear the colors of the chakra with purpose. And every time you look down at your sleeve and you see that indigo blue color, ideally it reminds us to bring our focus to the third eye, checking in. Two more breaths here with a flowing warrior one. Now when you're ready, step that back foot back into our warrior two stance, looking out over the right middle finger, flowing the pose gently, and noticing as we straighten the leg, we're gently, gently straightening it. One more breath here. Coming back to warrior two, stepping up to the top of the mat. Let's take both arms overhead again. A little bend in the knees, swan diving to forward fold. Inhaling as we lift to monkey. Exhaling to forward fold. Rising as we inhale, bring those hands down to the third eye. Inhaling up, swan diving down. Inhaling to monkey, exhale, forward fold, and rising up, exhale to the third eye, gently connecting, inhaling up. When we gently press the third eye, it sends feelings of peace and calm like a river throughout all parts of the body. Inhaling the arms up here one more time, connecting on the exhale, swan diving down. Let's step all the way back for downward dog, reaching those heels as close to the ground as we can manage or as is comfortable. And let's start to pedal through the heels. In our downward dog pose, we're sending good fluids down to the third eye. So this is a wonderful pose to stimulate it. Reaching both heels back and down, strong abdominals here. When you're ready, let's lower the knees gently 
and stack right up into an all fours posture. On the inhale, let's arch the back gently for cow. And on the exhale, we curl up like a Halloween cat. One more time, rounding into cat, coming back to a neutral position. As we look at the ground, let's inhale. And on the exhale, bring the right knee under uh, toward the nose. And on the inhale, press that right heel upward, arching the back. So we round the spine, nose to knee as we exhale. Inhale, arching the back, lifting the heel. We've turned our cat and cow into sunbird flow. One more time, nose to knee. One more time, pressing that heel upward and we come back to all fours. Again, let's inhale, looking down at the mat. This time on the exhale, we bring the left knee under the body and on the inhale, press that left heel up. One more time, nose to knee, and then pressing that heel upward. Let's come back to all fours and reach those hips back toward the heels, coming into Balasana, extended child's pose. Now, if you're comfortable doing so, you might rest your head and your third eye right down on the mat, connecting with the energy to the surface below us. If you're not quite able to reach your head to the mat, don't worry. Let's try two fists stacked one on top of the other and rest our third eye there. You might think to ourselves, I am wise. I am intuitive. I am able to listen to my inner guide. Now let's extend those arms out long again. If you'd like, we could take those hands over on the left diagonal for downward facing thunderbolt pose. Now we'll take the hands back to the center and over to the other side. Walking those hands back to the center, let's lift our hips and curl the toes to the ground, pressing those heels back and down Again, engaging the abdominals here. Always important to engage the abdominals as the back is stretching out. Two more breaths. Now let's step up to the hands here. Rising tall as we inhale. And let's head right into our airplane hinge. Palms down toward the ground. 
arms reaching back on the diagonal like jet, like jet wings. On the inhale, let's rise up and lift those palms in front of us toward the ceiling. Exhale, hinging forward to airplane. Inhale, rising with palms up to the sky. One more airplane hinge. Now let's take both arms up overhead, swan diving down to a forward fold, stepping back for downward dog. On the next inhale, let's come forward to a high plank or kneeling plank and lower down with control, lifting to cobra or upward dog, then lifting the whole body back to downward dog. Stepping up one foot at a time, rising tall as we inhale and we exhale to a strong chair pose. Inhaling arms overhead, swan diving down. Stepping back for downward dog. Inhaling to the plank of choice, we lower with control, lifting to cobra or upward dog. Pressing back, downward dog. Moving up to our hands, rising, and exhaling to chair. Swan diving down. Stepping back for downward dog. Moving into the plank of choice, exhaling as we lower. Inhale, lifting, rise back to downward dog, moving up to our hands. Inhaling as we lift, exhale into chair. Let's use two more sun salutations. Lifting those arms overhead and we'll bring them down when we're ready. Feel free to take a drink if you have one available close by. All right. So now I'm hoping the body is feeling good and warmed up. A good buzz of energy below the surface. Let's take our left arm across hugging it in close with the right arm for a half knot, relaxing 
through the shoulders here. Now when we're ready, relax that half knot, bring that right arm across and hug it in closer to the body. Now relax that arm. I'd like you to bring your right arm behind the lower back and just reach that arm all the way across. Now we're trying to stretch out this right shoulder, so think about how it's feeling. If you want a little more, maybe bind by holding on to your opposite arm. Feeling that nice deep stretch through the shoulders. Now let's relax that bind. Take that right arm straight up next to your ear, bending at the elbow. We try to reach to the shoulders and we might use that left arm to gently guide the elbow a little closer toward the midline of the body. Now gang, a big part of your body is gonna get in the way of moving that elbow and that's our head. So I don't want you to put the chin down. I don't want you to move the head back. Keep the crown lifted parallel to the ceiling. So that little bit of movement that you're adding here is just a tiny little bit. Now relax the left arm and then the right. Let's take our left arm now across the lower back. Check in with the shoulder. Do you want to stay here or bind with the other arm? listening to the body at all times for those little whispers of direction, which again is trusting our inner guidance. Now let's relax that bind. Bring that left arm up next to the ear. Reach down to connect with the shoulders or get closer to them. And the option is to bring that right arm over. Just gently guide that elbow a little closer to the midline of the body, which gives us a little more range of mo motion work for that left shoulder. Now let's relax the left arm, excuse me, the right arm and then the left, rolling those shoulders back and down. Let's take the left arm now up to shoulder height, inhaling, looking at the tips of our fingers, gently, gently twisting through the trunk. Inhale, watch that arm as it comes back to the center and we lower down as we exhale. Inhaling, the other arm up. Gently, gently twisting, inhaling back to the center and exhaling down. One more lateral raise with a gentle twist here. Now, when we're ready, let's step up to the top of our mat once again. Preparing for the Warriors, we take our left foot as far back as we can step with that whole left foot connecting to the ground. And we turn our hips to face forward. 
looking straight ahead into the distance with a soft gaze through the eyes. And maybe today in this practice, we'll take both hands and bring them into Anjali Mudra prayer pose and rest the blades of the thumb right at the third eye, very gently. Now you're welcome to close your eyes if you'd like. Another key to, to trusting our intuition and our inner guidance is when we give it a chance to guide us when our eyes are closed. Now, when we're ready, let's take that right foot and step back into warrior two, looking out over that left middle finger we can stand still here in a static warrior two or flow the pose if you'd like. If you're choosing to flow the pose, it involves gently straightening the front leg as you lift arms overhead on the inhale and then exhaling back. I'm gonna keep mine static, but you're welcome to use a flowing method if you'd like. And we remind ourselves, I am wise, intuitive, and able to listen to my inner guide. Now, when we're ready, let's gently bend the left forearm and lean in to a side angle pose. So we take a little more bend in the knee. We're leaning to the side in a side bend. And our left arm is just resting on that left leg. We're not pressing down. Rotating that right shoulder back so the chest is open rather than closed here. So open up through the chest. Three more breaths. Now gently, gently, let's rise up, relax those arms, and step up to the top of the mat. Trusting our intuition, let's use our monkey flow. Let's swan dive down, closing the eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. Inhaling to monkey, exhaling forward fold. Inhaling and rising overhead, palms touch. And on the exhale, we bring the blades of the thumbs to the third eye. Inhale, lift those arms up. And on the exhale, swan dive down. Inhaling to monkey. Exhaling, forward fold. Rising as we inhale, palms touching. Exhale, down to the third eye. Inhaling up. Swan diving down. Inhaling to monkey, exhaling forward fold. Rising as we inhale, palms touching, exhale to the third eye. Last time through, let's inhale up, exhaling down, inhaling to monkey, exhale forward fold. Rising, palms touching, exhale to the third eye, Inhaling those arms up and relax those arms down. Now let's try all of the warriors on the other side now. So this time we're taking the left foot back as far as we can step. Turning those hips to face forward. We engage the abdominals for good balance. Choose any arm options you like. And we always have that, that option of Again, connecting with the third eye.
Now when we're ready, let's gently pick up that left foot, stepping back into our warrior two, looking out over that right middle finger. And again, we're welcome to flow the pose or keep things still. Two more breaths. Now let's gently bend that right arm and lean in to our side angle pose, rotating that left shoulder back so the heart is open. Checking in with that right arm, making sure it's nearly resting on the right thigh. Breathing rather than holding the breath. Now when we're ready, we rise up, we relax those arms and step all the way up to the top of our mat. And again, grab a drink if you have one close by. Now, another great way to stimulate the third eye or brow chakra is to purposely use poses in yoga that require a lot of focus. So today, we're gonna use one that I think requires a whole lot of focus. It's Eagle Pose. So Eagle has a leg part and an arm part. So let's take our left foot and cross it over the right. Now you're welcome to keep the feet on the ground at all times in this option during the pose. Some folks might want to bend the knee and rest it above the supporting leg, above the knee. You can also squeeze those legs together. And some people might find it comfortable to take that top foot that's in the air and wrap it around the back of the supporting leg. So whichever option you wanna use for the legs, let's choose that now. Engage the abdominals to find good balance. Looking down at my legs, the one that's on top, I wanna take my opposite arm up high swoop that other arm under and stack up your two bent elbows. And then bring the backs of the hands together or bind with the thumb gently. Or you can twist at the wrist. The next step is to lift those elbows to shoulder height. <sighs> Find a steady focal point across the room. That will help with our focus. Breathe rather than holding the breath. Eagle pose. Now relax the arms, unwrap the legs. Okay, so again, let's do all of that on the other side to keep our practice balanced. Let's take the right foot cross it over the left leg. Feet can be at ground level, or we could go up and rest above the knee. Think about your leg options. Look down at your top leg. Take the opposite arm up high. Swoop under. Stack those elbows and find your eagle bind. Whatever feels good for you. Lifting those elbows to shoulder height keeping that good length in the trunk here, breathing as we balance and focus. One more breath. Now gently relax the arms. Unwrap those legs, very nice. Now let's take ourselves to the top of the mat once again, inhaling both arms overhead, 
swan diving down to a forward fold. And when we get into this forward fold, let's take a moment to straighten the legs as much as is comfortable for us. And with our head hanging low, just gently relaxing at the end of the spine, maybe today we'll use our peace fingers to hook onto our big toes for a big toe bind. If we're not able to reach that far down to the toes, how about a behind the legs hug? Just wrap your arms around them. Again, the forward fold has us sending good fluids down to the third eye. Sending peaceful, calming feelings throughout all parts of the body. Let's take four more breaths here. Now let's release any bind we're using. We'll take down one knee and then the other, stacking right up into all fours. Let's head down to dolphin pose. Lowering the forearms so our elbows are as wide as the shoulders. Lace the fingers and tuck in the bottom pinky for a flat base. We curl our toes to the ground. We press those heels back and down. And you might be able to rest your third eye here on the mat in our dolphin pose. Or you just get that head as close to the ground as is comfortable. Again, sending good fluids there. Breathing. Now gently, we lower the knees to the ground. We unlace the fingers and come back into child's pose. Taking four breaths here. And when we're ready, let's walk those hands back toward our bent knees, lifting up through the trunk. Let's bring our feet out from under us here. So we're going to take an easy seated posture and we're gonna work on a couple different things. The first thing that we're gonna work on is called the bee's breath or Brahmary breath. Um, I'm gonna actually get a little bit closer to the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. This type of breathing is going to be a great way to stimulate the third eye. And here's how it's gonna work. So I'll get a little closer here. We're going to take our hands, both hands right in front of our face. I want you to take your two middle fingers and you're going to gently rest them on top of your closed eyelids. The pointer finger is going to rest right above your eyebrows and the pinky fingers are gonna rest just below the eyes kind of right on top of the cheeks here. And the last part of Bromery breath is we're going to take our thumbs and gently press down on that little notch here. We're gonna press that little notch in and it's effectively going to close our ears to sound, okay? And you're gonna gently just use your thumb to press in that notch. So when we press in on both sides and we have our hands uh, over the eyes and over the cheeks, it's gonna look a little like this. And here's how it's gonna work. I'll do a couple and you'll see what I mean. So we're gonna inhale. And on the exhale, I want you to hum. Hmm. So you're gonna hum all the way to the end of your exhale, however long that is for you. And then you're gonna start again. You're gonna inhale and then hum all the way to the end of your exhale. 
So we're gonna try it, excuse me, five times through. Work at your own pace, of course. If I'm not done and you wanna go again, just go for it. Um, and I want you to notice how it vibrates the whole face. And I want you to think about that third eye and think about that indigo blue circle of energy just spinning there gently as we use our Bromery breath, okay? So when you're ready, let's get set. Two middle fingers resting on the eyelids. Pointer finger above the brow, pinky finger down below the eye. The thumbs are gonna go on to those little notches in the ears. When you're ready, let's inhale. And on the exhale, mm, Very nice. So we're just humming and exhaling out through the nose to the end of our exhale. And when you take those hands and the thumbs away, I don't know how you're feeling, but I just feel this tingling all around the face, even in the ears. So it's a good vibration all through the face and especially to the third eye. Now let's do a little singing to that chakra. Remember the seed mantra is sham. I'm going to sit back down for this one. So when we're ready in our easy seated posture, I like to just rest with my palms up in a receiving gesture. Let's go five times through, inhaling. Let's move on down toward the top of our mats here. We're gonna ease our way down to the mat here. And let's inhale and hug those knees in toward the chest. Maybe we'll rock the knees gently side to side to massage the back or circle those knees around. If you're using circles, let's make sure that we reverse them. Now let's bring those bent knees back in toward the chest. 
Let's keep the legs bent, but lower the feet to the ground, extending the arms out to the side like scarecrow arms. Let's inhale, engaging the abdominals, and on the exhale, gently lowering both knees over to one side for a gentle spinal twist. Using our twisting poses to hydrate all of the nooks and crannies of the spine, but also to wring out anything that is hindering our balance in the third eye. Anything that's hindering us finding focus or being able to concentrate or trust our intuition. Let's wring that away and leave space for all things good. When you're ready, let's engage the abdominals, bringing them up toward the ceiling, excuse me, the knees, of course, and then lower those knees over to the other side. Enjoying this nice, gentle spinal twist. Now gently, gently, we bring those knees back to the center. Let's find a comfortable position for Shavasana. Whether you'd like to keep your knees bent or keep those legs flat on the ground, it's always up to you. You're also welcome to take any other comfortable position for Shavasana. I'm going to do a little guided meditation, as I had mentioned earlier at the beginning of our class. So I am gonna turn the lights down for us. You're welcome to do so at your home as well. Let me go ahead and turn these lights down. And as we're practicing Shavasana, I'm just gonna read, and all that we're required to do is listen and breathe in a gentle, relaxed way. And you'll see that these this uh, meditation that I'm going to read has some instructions. So as you hear them, just try to follow along. Let's take a long, deep breath. And as we exhale, let's move our attention to the center of our forehead, in between the brows and just above the brow line. And let's imagine an indigo blue chakra. The dark indigo glow of the chakra illuminates our mind and then spreads to the rest of our body. Now let's imagine an entrance to our mind through the third eye. We open the door and walk into an empty room. Feel free to decorate the room any way you like, choosing our color, decor, look, and feel. making it suit our taste exactly so that it becomes our personal sanctuary. And we find the most comfortable spot in the room and we sit down.
we look out onto the world from there, bringing into focus the same thoughts, issues, situations, and ideas that occupy our day-to-day -day life, and we silently contemplate upon them. Now we see our sixth chakra spinning and gaining strength. As it spins faster, the chakra's indigo light washes over us and pervades every cell, every pore in our body. Let's breathe deeply and feel the energy bursting forth from our third chakra as rays of dazzling deep blue light. And we rest in this awareness. And in our mind, we gently stand up and walk to the door through which we entered the room. We walk out and we look back at our inner sanctuary and we feel one with it. Let us now bring our awareness back to the body and the breath, inviting small movements into the fingers and the toes that will gently wake them today. Beginning to breathe a little more deeply, feeling our chest lifting with that deep breath, sending nourishing oxygen to all parts of the body and the mind. And we find our hearts are shining with gratitude today. Grateful to have this practice with these poses and breathing tools and special mantra songs that can help us bring balance to our third eye wherever we are. And always grateful for this body and this breath that carries us through our practice and our day. Now, for anyone who's lying down for Shavasana, let's take a moment to bend the knees, hugging them in a little closer to the chest, perhaps gently, gently rocking those knees side to side, massaging the back in a gesture of self-care. And when we're ready, let's gently roll the entire body over to one side on the mat. As each of us breathe in the many jewels of our practice, peace, focus, and balance. And we exhale all of the warmth, kindness, encouragement, and love that we have for each other, for the whole world around us, and for ourselves. And when we're ready with our eyes still closed, Let's make our way back up to an easy seated posture on the mat. And with our eyes closed, I invite each one of us to bring the palms together at heart center. Let's start to gently rub those hands together, bringing some heat into the palms of our hands today. 
and let's use those warm hands to gently cover our closed eyes. And that amazing heat that we find radiating there is inviting our eyes to slowly open and we bring our hands down to rest upon our laps. Clear minds, kind words, compassionate hearts. Namaste. Thank you for joining me today for this uh, six chakra or third eye chakra balancing practice. I do want to thank uh, the writer of our, our scripted guided meditation. And that actually came from domeditation.com. So I want to thank the writers over there for creating this for us and enhancing our Shavasana uh, this evening with some guided meditation. I'm so glad that you could join me. I hope that you'll come back again. We're almost done with the chakras, so uh, feel free to watch this video as often as you like to bring some good balance to your third chakra or brow chakra or ajna chakra. Thank you so much for enjoying me. Good night.